Hi, it's Seta here. Welcome to the third part of the water system tutorial in Unity. And I'd like to mention that if you haven't seen the previous episodes, I highly recommend checking them out, as I explain a few elements there that won't be covering again here. Without further delay, let's get started. The next tab on our list is water decals, but we will get to this tab later when we talk about the formation, foam and everything else. For now, let's move on to the appearance tab. The first option we have is custom material, where you can assign your own material for water. If you leave this empty, the water will use the default material. And if you click new, the new material based on the HDRP water shader will be created. Double clicking the created shader will open the shader graph, a graphic shader editor in Unity that allows you to create and modify the look of shader without writing code. Thanks to this, you can easily add to water an effect like foam around object. Shader Graph is a very powerful tool that's definitely worth learning. It will come in handy not just for the water, but also for creating materials for characters, objects, special effects and more. But this isn't a Shader Graph tutorial, so let's move on to the next section, Smoothness. With the value range, you can control how smooth and shiny the water is, meaning how strongly is reflect lights. Lowering the smoothness range gives you more matte water with blurred reflections. It works great for example in rough sea where the waves are more matte and scatter the light more. Increasing the range gives you the shiner water with clear reflections like a calm lake on a windless day. But it's also important to understand why sometimes at the highest value the sun's reflections disappear. First, it all depends on the value set in the directional light under angular diameter. This is where you define the actual size of the sun, that is how large the surface is from which the light rays are emitted. This affects, for example, the sharpness of shadowing edge and, in our case, the size of the sun's reflection on the water. When you set the smoothness value to 1, the surface behaves like a mirror that reflects light in exactly one direction. If that direction doesn't align with the camera, you won't see any glare. When you lower the smoothness, the light reflection begins to scatter, which means more of it, it reach your camera. That's why you can see, for example, the reflection of sunrise on the water surface. It is worth adding that the smoothness parameter is not a single number, but a range of values, that is a minimum and maximum. That's because the water system doesn't treat the surface as complete uniform, but rather as something dynamic, which changes depending on the viewing angle, wave motion or distance from the camera. Extending this range allows Unity to randomly change smoothness within the value range, which makes the water not look artificial and the reflection change dynamically, giving a more natural effect. Below we have fade range, which determines at what distance from the camera those values are supposed to be interpolated. Close to the camera the water can be shiny and realistic, and further away more matte and less demanding on rendering. Next we have refraction and it is a group of settings that controls how what is under the water looks when we look through its surface. That is how light refracts, how deep we can see and what color the water has from the outside. In the color section we can set the color of the light passing through the water surface. It is exactly that colors that will be applied to the object located under the water when we look at them from above. To better illustrate this, imagine a green glass filled with water. If you shine a flashlight through the glass, the light after passing through will have a green color. 
The glass is our water surface and the color of that glass is our color in the refraction section. The brighter the color, the more transparent the glass become. Of course, the color of water inside the glass also affects how the light looks, but I hope that now you better understand what this parameter does in Unity. The next parameter is maximum distance. It determines how deep below the water surface the effect of refraction or bending of lights will work. In simple terms, it controls how much the image underwater will bend and ripple when we look at the bottom. This happens because rays reflected of the bottom are refracted in the water before they reach our camera, which causes that everything we see underwater seems to move, be distorted on float. Exactly like in real life when we look through ripping water at rocks or sand on the bottom. Next we have the absorption distance parameter, which lets us determine how much light will be absorbed by the water. In practice, this means that we can set whether the water will be more transparent or murky. The smaller the value, the faster the light disappears in the depth and the water looks deeper. The larger the value, the farther the light travels, which makes the water brighter and more transparent. Next, we have the scattering section, which is responsible for water color settings and the way light scatters inside it. Color defines the color that water takes on do the light scattering. The brighter the color, the more light will pass through the water, giving it a lighter look. With ambient term, we control how much ambient light affects the override brightness of the water surface. A higher value makes the whole surface appear brighter with ambient light. It is also worth mention that in global volume, in water rendering section, there is a parameter called ambient probe dimmer, which allows us to control the intensity of the ambient probe influence on water lighting. For example, if you are working with an overcast scene, and want to slightly brighten the ambient light on the water surface, we can increase the ambient probe dimmer value to achieve a lighter water appearance. Next, we have height term that allows us to control the intensity of light scattering depending on the height of the waves. The higher the value, the more the waves will be light up as they reach higher crests. For example, when light passes through a tiny layer of water on a wave tips. On the other hand, displacement term is responsible for scattering based on the water surface displacement that is not just vertically but also horizontally. Thanks to this, light can realistically bend and scatter depending on the shape and direction of the waters. At the end, it is worth mention that the Heimter and Displacement term are responsible for general light scattering regardless of light direction from the sun. They mainly take into account local features of the wave, its height and displacement, and not direction of the lights from the sun. Meanwhile, with Direct Light Tip term, we can control how strongly the light will be scattered at the top of the waves, taking into account the direction and position of the sun, which will make the wave crest brighter. Direct light body term controls the same scattering, but in the middle of the wave. Then we have the maximum height override. These parameters allow us to manually set the maximum wave height that Unity should take into account when calculating various water effects. This is important when we use, for example, deformers, because Unity doesn't know the height of the such a wave and may miscalculate scattering on it. The next section is caustic, that is a light effect that appears when the light passes through rippling waters and create bright patterns on the bottom or on object submerged in water. Whether you use it or not, it's up to you, but I will discuss the options we can control when we activate this effect. First, we have caustic resolution, which determines the resolution of our light effect on the bottom. In simulation band, we can define what should drive this effect. 
whether they should appear due to the ripples or large waves or small waves. With virtual plane distance, we define the distance from which our light effects are simulated. The higher the value, the sharper those lights on the bottom will be, the smaller the value, the more blurred they will appear. So, if you have, for example, murky water, then these blurs should be bigger than in the case of crystal clear water. Next, we have tilting factors, which let us set how dense the grid of those light is and with intensity how bright they are. Caustic plane blend distance determines the distance from the water surface at which those lights effect will be visible. This is useful when, for example, we have very shallow water and we don't want those lights effect to be visible under it, but instead appear gradually as depth increase. The next option, directional shadows, determines whether shadow should affect where caustic appears. If we check these options, the brightness of the light's effect will be dimmed if they are in shadows. Using directional shadow distance, we can define how visible they are in those shadows. The last option in the appearance section that we can enable is underwater. Thanks to it, when the camera goes under the water, Unity will generate proper effect for it. It is worth mentioning that if the camera can't physically go underwater, this option should be disabled, because underwater effects are still generated even when the camera is not physically under the surface and this affects performance. With volume depth, we can set the depth of the water surface at which the underwater effect is generated, because we don't want the situation when the camera goes too deep and the effect stop being displayed. If we use the formers to rise the water level, with volume height parameter, we can specify the height to which the underwater effect should be generated inside such deformers because, in that case, Unity takes two parameters into account, whether the camera is below the water surface and whether it's within the range defined by volume depth and height. If not, the underwater effect won't be generated. Therefore, using volume height, we can define the height above the water level, where, after crossing the water surface, underwater will be turned on. If our scene has multiple overlapping water systems with volume priority, we can define which of those systems should be used for generating the underwater effect. The higher the value in volume priority, the more important the underwater effect of this water system will be. Next, we have absorption distance multiplier, which is linked to absorption distance parameter from the refraction section and allow us to increase or decrease the absorption of light rays by water where we are under the surface. In other words, it increase or decrease underwater visibility. The last option we can enable is screen space reflection, which allow us, when we are under the water, to see the object above the water surface properly deformed by refraction and waves. Remember that the underwater effect is really just volumetric fog. So most of the settings from the volumetric fog section in global volume will also affect the appearance of the underwater. So when we are underwater and we turn on caustics, Unity will render rays of light shining through the water. The same applies to other settings that we can control in volumetric fog. And that's all for this episode. I hope that all of the options in the appearance tab are now clear to you. If you liked the video, don't forget to leave the thumbs up and subscribe the channel, because in the next episode we will cover the foam, the formers and excluders. And until next time, see ya.